NASCAR and F1 went head to head. Let's take a look at who won. Coming up next. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. If I haven't earned your subscription, hopefully today is the day that I will earn that subscription. All right, the Miami F1 Grand Prix and the NASCAR Darlington Throwback Race basically went head-to-head -head on Sunday, and we finally have some numbers. Let's take a look at those real quick. These numbers, of course, from Adam Stern, and you will see that both did pretty well. 2.6 million viewers for NASCAR, 2.6 million viewers for F1. And in the all-critical uh, 18 to 49 demographic, NASCAR had half a million, uh, F1 had about three quarters of a million. So depending on how you take those numbers in, one won, the other one lost. NASCAR had more viewers overall, F1 had more viewers in the key advertising demographic that is, of course, 18 to 49. But here are a couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. First thing I wanted to talk about is that is 4.6 million viewers that wanted to watch top level auto racing in the United States. I think that is a good thing overall and I think that is a great thing uh, to look at in the future of motorsport. And uh, I will get to why I think that in just a minute, but 4.6 million people watching top level uh, motorsports that were basically competing with each other. That's, that's pretty cool. Especially when you factor in there were other sports going on, baseball was going on, uh, there's NFL or USFL football going on, and uh, of course there are the NBA playoffs, so that I think, uh, those are really strong numbers. And the other one is F1 edged out NASCAR in the key demographic of 18 to 49, but let's not forget that the F1's basically riding a Netflix crest and NASCAR is riding a slump, so I think these numbers could sort of even out. Uh, if you go forward, because I think eventually that drive to survive will jump the ship. There's already people desubscribing from Netflix and droves, so I don't know how sustainable that is going forward, but I think they're definitely receiving a bump basically right now from a TV show. There's a lot of people watching a reality TV show that happen to tune in to racing, so uh, how many of those people stick will be interesting to find out, but I'm not taking anything away from F1. They've done a great job with social and with that Netflix series. So, and I'm actually gonna get to that in just a minute, so I don't wanna get too far into it right now. But here's what I did wanna talk about. I think if these two series had worked together instead of competing, it would have been better for everyone. Uh, me personally, obviously I couldn't watch the F1 race because I felt like that would have been irresponsible to miss some of the cup race when I'm basically got a YouTube channel about it. Uh, so I had to miss basically the Miami uh, Grand Prix. Uh, so that was a bummer for me. And I think a lot of people uh, picked one or the other. Like a lot of people might have wanted to watch the NASCAR race, watched uh, the F1 race instead, and then caught the uh, NASCAR race later and, you know, vice versa. So I think that kind of hurt them, and there was really no need to compete. I think NASCAR would have got better ratings with a night race in this particular situation, and, and you know, F1 would have got better ratings if NASCAR had run its race at night. So I think these numbers actually could have been way higher if the two powers that be had have worked with each other instead of foolishly uh, sort of competing with each other. Uh, so uh, going forward, hopefully they will work together. And if they work together, I think there are a few things that they can learn from each other. First off, NASCAR can learn from F1 with, with their blueprint for how they do their social media, how they did that Netflix deal, their streaming services and things like that. There is a lot of things NASCAR can look at F1 and take, like the point system. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I hate NASCAR's point system. Sorry, that, that's not nothing to do with this. Anyway, but there are a lot of things NASCAR can learn from what uh, F1 has done to gain and garner this younger audience, 200,000 more than the NASCAR race. So that is one thing NASCAR can look at F1 and sort of learn from. There are also things F1 can learn from NASCAR, the first of which being these, these special little races NASCAR has, uh, like the throwback weekend. I remember last year or maybe two years ago, I'm not great with years, and I'm a, I'm a casual F1 fan. I love it. I just uh, don't get to see as much of it as I would like to. Uh, but remember when the Gulf uh, livery or paint scheme, uh, <laughs> we call it a NASCAR, uh, was came about, uh, I think McLaren ran that. McLaren ran that golden livery and everybody went crazy over that thing. So I think F1 could actually do a throwback weekend uh, at one of their older tracks, Silverstone, I think, a lot of people have mentioned. 
Uh, so I think that would be really cool for them to initiate a program like that. And the other thing I think F1 could learn from is make their tickets a little bit more affordable so regular people uh, can come to the race. Uh, those Miami tickets were so, so expensive. And I mean, it's a good thing to have that much demand for tickets that they're that expensive. But I think you also could, you know, cater to, you know, regular fans that, that wanted to watch this thing. So hopefully Las Vegas will be a, a little bit of a cheaper ticket and some, some normal human beings can go watch an F1 race in the United States. And, you know, Austin GP, uh, I think their tickets were also pretty high as well. But like I said, I would love to see them work together, like whichever one does the day race, the other one does the night race, and even IndyCar. IndyCar could slot in the middle there. Like one of the coolest weekends ever uh, is when they uh, ran, they don't really do it anymore, but the Memorial Day weekend when you can watch three races in one day, that's one of the coolest things in all of motorsport. Uh, scheduling conflicts and stuff like that, I don't, I don't even know if it'll happen this year or whatever, but... Uh, it is what it is, like Monaco, the Coke 600, and the Indy 500, uh, that's just a really cool weekend. I hope that they will bring that back. I haven't looked into it, but uh, hopefully they will all work together in the future because I think if they all work together, it'll benefit each series individually and motorsports overall as a whole. And so hopefully uh, we will see them work together in the future. Uh, that's just my take on it. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, below what you think about it, and that's all I got for you. So... Uh, if you made it this far, hopefully you will subscribe. And other than that, thanks for your time. Peace. The end.